you live in a reality parallel to many versions of your universe. Welcome into another edition of Box Office Quarterbacks. My name is Jeff. That is Gerald. We are talking about a lot of DC stuff today. We haven't talked about DC in a while. Not only are we talking about uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths, the animated movie, part one that came out a few weeks ago. Uh, Gerald suffered through Aquaman the Lost Kingdom for us, so we don't have to. So he's going to give a little mini review on that. And then we'll talk about the Supergirl casting uh, at the end here. Gerald, I would say it's nice to talk about DC again, but I don't know how nice we are going to be tonight. Yeah, I mean, we're going to be so nice that instead of spending the next 15 minute podcast like we usually would ragging on one of their movies, we're going to spend about five to seven minutes ragging on two of them. And yeah. then go talk about their casting choices. Um, <laughs> so that's going to be fun. And and I do. I'm really. I don't even know if excited is the word, man. It's just like, you know, I, ju- I love suffering so much that I just had to end a really great January off with even more suffering, and that was with two really bad movies. Um, maybe I'm being a little cruel there, but I don't know, man. It wasn't great. I I will say, I've heard a lot of things about Crisis on Infinite Earths. Uh, they had an Arrowverse crossover a few years ago. Obviously, in the 80s, this was the huge crossover event where DC righted the ship and made their canon make a little more sense, but everything is multiverse now. I don't think this needed to be two parts or three parts uh, because I think that the first part of this potential or this series really suffers from, you know, having no ending here. It is very slow to get going, and honestly, it is very disappointing for me. And that's my thoughts initially. Yeah, the the, the pace is slow, and a lot of the jokes don't land. Um, they make weird choices. The animation is not exactly fun or great. No. It's just kind of there. Um, the big fight you get is 30 minutes into the movie with Lex Luthor, and it's pretty dumb so i mean he does he does like the most basic lex luther thing and just nerfs everybody by taking away their powers while he gets to be superman basically in a maze of suit um sorry spoilers but like it's just i don't know man it wasn't it wasn't that great it didn't it wasn't fun it felt like a poor remake of the Arrowverse crisis event um yeah with less stakes even because like even in people like from the main universe actually died um, or like big characters died. So like, I don't know. It just, and CW has some bad writing. Like let's get like CW writing. We all know it. It all looks like Gotham. It all looks like Gotham. nice. The video game was even pretty much a CW verse show the way it was written. And, and this, it, it had worse writing than that. It was just bland and boring. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. I wasn't, and I, I love DC. I watched all of the DC animated universe, like the original, like what was it, twenty something movies, um, nineteen, I think maybe even. I don't remember exactly, but those were all great, and fantastic. So when the Tomorrowverse started up, I was excited, and so far I just haven't. Nothing's really hit it. Nothing's been there that I was just like, yes, I need to get back into DC fandom. Yeah, like the the thing with the the CW crisis was they did a lot of cool stuff with it, like they brought in. The 89 Batman world, they brought Ezra Miller in as the Flash from the Snyderverse, and that's before all the Ezra Miller controversy. And you had Kevin Conroy playing like an older version of Bruce Wayne. Like there were, I did, I did hear. Sorry to interrupt you, man, but I did hear the Kevin Conroy voice something for these the same second for for the third part. Yeah, the third part. Um, Okay, yeah, I heard that he had voiced something. Um, yeah, so he he has sadly passed away since then. So uh, it is cool that we're going to get him here. But uh, like the multiverse versions of the heroes that we get here, I didn't care about at all. Like we got an evil Justice League, uh, even th- the OG Justice League from Earth One, I didn't care about. And that's really sad because I think the voice cast is talented. You have Jensen Ackles as Batman, like Jimmy Simpson, I think is green arrow and he's great in Westworld. You have a a lot of good voice actors here. I just don't think they put the pieces together to make me really care about going into part two. 
and the animation was really flat, like especially coming off of my adventures with Superman on Max. It just pales in comparison. It's just uh, not what you wanted when it comes to the high standards of DC animated movies. Yeah. Um, so end of the day, like I'm just going to go ahead and do it so we can get past this movie and stop dredging on about how bad it is. Um, it's a bench for me. Um, I, I don't think using the flash as the center of the universe in this sense, I don't know. It just, it, it fell flat to me. There were some good parts of it occasionally. Like you said, tons of great voice actors. I mean, Zachary Quinto is um, Lex Luthor. So like he, like I love him. Um, there's a few really good um, actors in here and actresses. It just doesn't hit. It doesn't, it does not hit that anything at all. And it needs to be benched. I hope that part two and three can save this because it's also just so very slow that you're, you're consistently just like, when's it going to be fun? When am I going to enjoy this? No. Yeah. Um, honestly, I think the, the, my favorite part that I enjoyed was part of the, the evil, the bad world where like the, the evil justice league was there. You had Ultraman and owl man, stuff like that. But then like the way that ended, the way that world kind of went, even that was just like, I understand that they're the bad guys in this sense, but they're still supposed to be themselves just with like negative connotations. And they were all pretty freaking stupid. Yes. Um, like, um, so I was just like, I don't, I don't know, man. It wasn't, it wasn't good. Yeah. Um, speaking of things that aren't good, well, I'm going to bench this movie. That'll be uh, not surprising, but we are going to transition to our next movie. Uh, a movie I had no interest seeing whatsoever. Gerald took the bullet for us on that one. Aquaman, the lost kingdom came out last month. Um, there was absolutely no marketing for this movie whatsoever. It just pretty much dropped in theaters. Uh, Gerald, give me your review on this movie and the end of the DCEU. It's so obviously the end, because even the post credit scene was just stupid, funny. They had a post credit scene. Um, they, they're one of the biggest jokes in this is that um, somebody that like, Aquaman gets his brother out of jail and his brother's never been to the, like, the top, the, the actual land and um, land world. And he gets him to eat a cockroach. And like, we have to watch him eat a cockroach. And then that's the post credit joke. Um, the CGI does not look good in, at all. Um, there's times where it looks decent. Underwater scenes, I think, look pretty good, actually. Um, it's just some of like the fighting and everything's not good. The um, first, like, the opening scene is a montage of Aquaman's life since the last movie um, to Born to be Wild. And it just comes off so, I don't know, man. Um, it's hard to explain because, like, it, I understand it's a superhero thing, but it just, I don't want to call it childish, but it comes off really bad and really stupid. Um, it's like, he's like, yeah, I'm a dad. So he goes, yeah, I'm a single dad just running life and kicking ass and breaking heads. Oh yeah. And then like, boom, boom, boom. That guy ate it. Like voiceover. It's just really weird. Um, the Amber Heard stuff was so obviously edited out because like in the beginning of the movie, he talks about being a single dad. Um, but like, there's also photos of her with the baby. Who isn't that old? So I don't know how recent it is. That's never freaking explained. Amber Heard herself doesn't have a word until what, like an hour and a half into the movie. I think she's in a couple scenes. Like at one point she damn near dies and still doesn't have a word to say yet. Oh my um, God. It's and, and like, I think that whole situation, I don't want to jump into that stuff where DC's choices were right or wrong, but that whole situation really hurt this movie. I think because they had to find different ways to do it, different ways to tell the story and ways to also ignore her existence while keeping her in the movie. And it was just awkward considering she is the wife of the main character and the mother of his child at the same time. And the child plays a pretty important role in said film. So like she does have to come in at some point, right? Like that, like that's why she finally gets her speaking words. Cause at this point it's like, well, we've seen Amber and her child's about to be used for like a demon sacrifice. So we got to go get her. You know, um, <laughs> it's just, <clears throat> I don't know. It doesn't work well. And then at the very end, and I'm sorry for the spoilers, everybody, but at the very end, Aquaman finally like, convinces everybody that, yeah, I'm going to go up and be the king and get the, and like the 
Aqua, like we're Atlantis is going to Aqua World. <laughs> <laughs> That's a better name, maybe. <laughs> it's probably, a, but Atlantis decides they're finally going to work with um, the people on the land because you know that's the whole like argument between like the board of the of Atlantis and the king, and um, he has a press conference and the press conference. He's talking off like king like and professionally. We're going to do this. We're like equality and we're going to be together and all this good shit. And then just at the very end, you hear him grab the mic and it's just that shit, that broken mic sound. And you're like, because I'm Aquaman. Hell yeah. And he starts screaming and partying and like nobody else is doing anything. You don't hear. Re- I guess there's like some cheers. It's just so freaking awkward. And it's like DC to its death of the DCEU. It really wanted to copy the MCU without copying the MCU. Because what did it do? Immediately jumped into a team up without the origin stories to three of its four, or really most of its freaking characters. Um, did that right off the bat instead of giving us origin stories like the MCU did. Because it thought that we're going to be better because we have better heroes and people know them. Wrong. They're like, freaking stupid. MCU did it right. People know them, but not a lot of people do. And if you want to get the casual moviegoers to actually go and pay attention to your fucking films, maybe try to put in a little effort to get them dragged into it and committed to it first. Not just, oh, here's Batman, Superman, Wonder Man, and Flash, and Aquaman all in one. You know their stories, right? Like, that was, it's, we can go on about this all damn day, right? Yes. But, and it, it did that at the beginning, and it carried it to the end. By having a minuscule character announce who he is on national TV in a press conference with a rock song playing in the background. Because guess what came back up? Born to be wild. So So they're trying to do like ACDC back in black was for Iron Man 1. For the ending of the series. The ending of the universe. They're trying to get you to be sold on this being like this badass character that. He was minuscule in the comics and for so long, but now he's here and he's he's here to fucking bring everybody together and save the world, right? Like, I don't know, a little bit too much there for me. Um, the movie was, there were parts that were way overacted by Jason Momoa. I usually love Jason Momoa and I hate talking about him, but I just, it, it didn't, it didn't vibe well. I hope he comes back into the new DC universe as uh, Lobo. I think he'd be fantastic as that character, but... I just Aquaman's not it. It's it's not it. In fact, um, his brother seems more like an Aquaman. Um, yeah. To me, um, that's not because of what he looked like in the comics. Just the way he carries himself and talks. I don't know. Um, I'm not. I've never really been an Aquaman comic reader or anything. I really only saw his cartoons growing up, and it just it different vibes. So it kind of clashes. You know, like the the person in me that watched those cartoons going up sees what looks and sounds like Aquaman next to what is Aquaman. Um, and Jason Momoa, I usually like, but just in this, I'm, I'm glad it's done. There are brighter days ahead for the DCU, uh, specifically uh, the start of filming for Superman Legacy, directed by James Gunn. That starts going in March, but we did get another key casting in this world which is uh, Supergirl, who is going to be played by Millie Alcock of uh, House of the Dragon fame. So um, I have not watched the show, so I can't really speak on um, how she is an actress. She definitely does look like Kara Zor-El from the comics. Um, And we've seen three on-screen Supergirls now. Um, I did love Sasha Kelly in the flash. She was one of, uh, probably my favorite parts of that, but what, what are your feelings on the casting of the new Supergirl in the DCU? I'm interested to, uh, see how she portrays it. She's a little more serious, obviously in the game of Thrones show. Um, but I do love her in that. Um, she, she has been good from what I've seen. I think it wasn't even that many episodes though. So I don't know much about her. Um, as you mentioned, I think with these kind of things, we, the best we can do is look at what their body of work is. And since we don't know much about it, um, we, with comic book castings, we need to fall back on what the character looked like and acted like. Um, and I don't know much about what the character acted like other than what I've seen in TV or movies, but, um, she does, like you said, look a lot like Supergirl. So I'm, I'm down for it, but I do wish we would have kept Sasha Kale, um, Kaye, how do you say it? Kelly? Um, I wish we would have kept her. 
Yeah. Just because I, I really do think she was great. And I think she um, has a lot of potential as a, not just, um, well, as an actress, really. So I wish they would have kept her, but if they had to replace her with somebody, I think Millie Icox a pretty good, pretty good pick. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll see how it stacks up. Like, like I said, Sasha Kelly or Kaye, <laughs> me and Gerald are both half Hispanic, but we can't say her last name. Uh, Sasha Kaye uh, was great in the flash. Um, just like really carried that movie, but yeah, like Superman legacy is going to be very, very important uh, because people are a little down on superhero movies right now. Uh, so they're going to need some of that goodwill to move things forward. Um, anything else DC related you want to add before we get out of here? Just be good enough. Like just, just be good enough. Okay. Right now the MCU is down. It's not bad, but it's down. People are looking for other stuff. And if the DCU can just figure it out one movie at a time for now, I think it'll be good. Because they do have characters that people love. And they have some great stories. I do hope that they stay away from a few of them. We don't need to see another Crisis on Infinite Earths movie. Um, they don't need to jump into the multiverse stuff. There's tons of stuff they can do with Earth 1 in this world for at least at least Phase 1. Yeah, for sure. Um, one thing that we do know that we love is rival fantasy sports. Uh, they are entering Super Bowl mode. You can go to joinrival.com slash box office QBs for $25 and fl- $25 and free play, uh, $10 in your first deposit and up to a $200 deposit match. You can play fantasy bingo for the Super Bowl. You can do rival fantasy challenges for the Super Bowl, whole bunch of fun stuff. But this has been another edition of Box Office Quarterbacks. I'm Jeff. That's my friend Gerald. We'll talk to you guys very, very soon.